Hello, my name is Michael Fudge and welcome to the SQL screencast. In this screencast, we'll be looking at the data definition language in SQL to create and drop tables and add columns, keys, and constraints. Then we'll also be looking at the data manipulation language so that you can insert data into your tables and read the data back out with the select statement. This is a basic introduction to how to create your tables and add data into them. Okay, I'm starting in my own personal database, as you can see up in the database window up here. And I'm going to start by creating, creating a table. And in this particular example, we're going to deal with uh, products like product catalog, um, maybe a website where they sell products. So first I'm going to create um, a product types table. And this product types table is going to have one column called um, product type. And we'll make that a var car uh, 20. And not null, because we don't want to allow null values. We have to enter a value here. And we're also going to set a constraint on this of primary key. So constraint uh, pk product type primary key product type. Now why oops I forgot my opening and closing brackets. Now why um, giving it a name PK product type? This name is arbitrary but it, it helps you identify the constraint that you added at a later time. For example Suppose I want to get rid of this constraint, but I, I don't want to delete the entire table. Um, there's a way to drop the constraints by name. So it's important to give them a name that you're going to remember and recognize. Um, also, if there's an error that's thrown as a result of this constraint, it's very useful um, to be able to uh, see the name of the constraint and say, oh, that's a product, key. that's a primary key on a product type. Okay, so I've got my SQL in here. I'm going to hit execute. It says commands created, command completed successfully. So you might be wondering, you know, what did you just do? So later on, I'm going to show you how you can query the information schema to, to through SQL statements, find the table that you created. But for now, I'm going to use the Object Explorer. If I go down here into my database uh, as part of the Object Explorer, and if I just refresh the table listing, I should see um, product types in here. And if I design this table, it brings up the, the GUI mode, and you'll see that I have product type var car, and it's set as primary key. So again, I could have done a bunch of typing and clicking in here to do the same thing, but the advantage of using the, the SQL statements is that um, once you do it and once you get it right, you can just merely save it as a text file somewhere on your local system, and then whenever you wanted to recreate this table structure, you can do it again by opening it up and re-executing the SQL. Okay, so I have my table. One other thing I want to talk about is if I execute this again, I'm going to get an error because there's already an object named product types in the database. And this should make sense to you. I can't create the same object twice. I could call it product types one and run it, but that, that doesn't really solve our problem here. So the, the issue is, is what if you want to um, <clears throat> create the table and um, have the script always recreate the table? So what you can do here is you can add a drop table uh, product types at, at the top and um, this will first execute and delete the table and then this command will run and recreate the table. So in this nice little script package here I can execute this as many times as I want each time it's first dropping the table then the second time uh, after it drops the table it's going to recreate the table. So again, at this point, all I have is um, a basic table with no data in it. So the next step is let's add some data. To add data, you need to use the SQL insert statement. This is not um, this is not DML anymore, or this is not DDL anymore. This is DML, data manipulation language. Okay, insert into product types. And I'm going to insert the product type 
that's the column I want to insert into and the value I want to insert is let's just make some simple things up book and I'm gonna copy that and use copy and paste are my friend I'm gonna also move this down a bit so we can fit it all in here okay book hardware software and after I do my inserts um, I'm gonna do a select so that you can and of course I made a mistake here it's not intro it's into <laughs> whoops let me fix that three times over alrighty so now I'm deleting my table recreating my table adding three rows into my table then this last command here is going to show you the output of the table so that you can see that there's three rows of data in it so let's run this and I've got a mistake somewhere so let's see um, it's uh, not value it's values so you know I make my mistakes too but the advantage of this of the syntax checker is it will check you okay so there we go so now I have delete the table recreate the table add three rows into the table and then run the select output okay next we move on to the products table and our products table has a product ID which will serve as primary key and in this case I don't want to have to enter a number for the product ID so I'm using the identity modifier to the int data type the identity modifier says um, system you put a number in and I don't care what the number is as long as it's unique then I have the name of the product Barcar 50 the cost of the product which I'm using um, uh, a decimal value two decimal points um, and I'm always also setting a default generally when it comes to um, you know ordinal values like numbers uh, integers dates you want to try and set defaults uh, to avoid um, null values even though I'm not allowing null it's important to set a default so that something gets inserted in there um, then I ha at last I have the product type and I've set one constraint on uh, the primary key if you look at this table you might say well there's I need to have other constraints like for example you don't want someone to enter a product cost that's a negative value so to to accommodate those kinds of um, those kinds of rules you need to add different types of constraints like check constraints and and um, for example you wouldn't want two name two product names in there two products with the same name so you need to use um, a unique constraint let me give you an example so if I uh, do a couple of inserts here let me just copy them and paste them I, here's my paste and if I execute that you'll see that I've added three three products the the this kind of illustrates the importance of constraints because in one row here we made two mistakes logically in our data is one we're allowing negative values to go in our product cost which that doesn't really make a lot of sense and two we want to restrict the types of products to books hardware and software this is obviously a typo and we'd like to to avoid that also it doesn't make sense to have the same product name in there more than once even though this is the primary key we want to set another constraint on this to prevent the user from inserting the same title book in more than once so what can we do about this well we need to add some additional constraints to our create table statement to handle the title issue we want to have a unique constraint on product name and to, to address the um, negative values for product costs we want to say check constraint on product cost product cost greater than or equal to zero and finally um, we need to set a foreign key constraint on product type and foreign key constraints are kind of interesting because they're a little complicated foreign key and the name of the foreign key is product type and now I have to say that it references 
um, the table product types and the primary key in that table is product type. Okay, so let me explain this. You're saying I have a foreign key in my table called products and the name of the foreign key is product type and product type is associated with the primary key named product type also in this table, product types. And what that does for you is that says you can't enter a value in the product type column that isn't already found in um, the product types table. So I need to enter either book, hardware, or software. I won't be able to enter in this bullsluk. So let me run this now. Uh, we'll execute it. And you'll see now that we get some errors here because we have, um, we're violating a unique key constraint here. Makes sense. We're violating um, other constraints. So let me change this around. So let's say learn uh, ASP.net. 3.5. Uh, let's re-execute. Okay, so that's good. We're still violating unique constraint here. So let's change this to um, learn Windows 2008 server. And let's execute that. And we still get an error because we're still violating the check constraint here with this value because it says product cost of conflict occurred tells you all about the check constraint so we need to give this a valid value let's say that this book costs uh, $44.95 and then if we execute this now we're violating a foreign key constraint on this because this has to either be book hardware or software so I'll just change it to book and then when you execute it you finally get the data to insert so hopefully you understand that in your table design it's important to add the constraints because these constraints guarantee that the data is going to go in there accurately accurately and remember it's part of good database design is to make sure that your data goes in accurately and that's the whole purpose behind the constraints and this concludes our webcast hopefully you've learned a little bit more about how to create and drop tables and add your columns and constraints and then add basic data using the insert statement and also pull it back out with the select statement okay we'll see you later and there's more screencasts to come